So picking up where we left off, uh, we have the menu that's opening and closing now, but we still have some issues. Even though the menu button is working to toggle it open and closed, it still stays open when you click a navigational link, which is counterintuitive. Uh, let's go back and add another jQuery function to address that problem. But before we do that, let's also just take a quick peek at it and let's see where we ended up actually leaving off. So this is where we left off and on the surface it looks pretty good, but there are a couple of things. One, this uh, menu link is underlined. Let's get rid of that. And also notice that right here there's like five or six pixels or so underneath the menu button border that is visible here but when I click it then it, it's collapsed and you might like that and if you like that you can leave it just the way it is it almost looks like this becomes a tab but if you don't want that to happen you want it to just start right at the bottom of this then we can um, address that too so let's take a look at fixing that up so find in your CSS where we have the A menu rule and because it's underneath the menu that we need to bump it down. Let's come up under here and let's add a margin bottom. Let's go test it and see if it fixed it and did. See now there's the, about six pixels right there and that menu button doesn't look like it's being cut off anymore. Okay, So that part's fixed. Now we just need to uh, get rid of this uh, underline on the menu button. Let's go to our CSS and again it's dealing with a menu. So go ahead and add a property of text decoration and we'll tell it to have none. Let's check it out again. Actually I'm just going to go here and I'm going to hit refresh and you see it gets rid of that underlining so that's good. That's what we want. Now one of the things that I want you to notice here, let's if I click on menu and I click on menu again it'll go away. But whenever I go down here and I try to click on one of these, you would think that, I'm, by the way, I'm clicking, you would think that it would disappear, right? That's the intuitive thing to happen. Let's open this up and then you can see better what's happening. So right here, every time I click a different link, it's going to change to like hash education, hash profile, hash skills, etc. So let's change it to profile experience and what would be happening if we actually had these um, places already created in the page it would be jumping to that part of the page but you know the problem is that the menu no matter what doesn't go away so we still have to add some more JavaScript to the menu so we need to make it so that anytime you click on any of the items in this list that the menu gets hidden again okay because otherwise it's pretty counterintuitive for it to stay on top of all of the content and forcing you to go back up here to turn it off with the menu button. All right, so let's look at the JavaScript for that. First, I want to jump really quickly over to the HTML and let's look at what we are trying to do. So we're trying to make it so that anytime we click on one of these list items, on one of these anchors, basically the anchor that's inside of this list item, that the menu will disappear. So we need to target something that's in nav list li a. All right, so that's going to be our JavaScript target. And here's how we could look at writing it. So everything that's grayed out is stuff we already have. And if you look at this syntax where it says nav ul li a, and that's in quotation marks, that's the descendant rule that it's targeting. Anytime somebody clicks on that anchor that's inside the list item, inside the unordered list that's inside of nav, then when they click on it, we're going to have something happen. And an easier way to, to look at this, instead of saying A inside of LI, inside of UL, blah, 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 basically when a nav link is clicked, okay, because we don't really have any other nav links on here, but when a nav link is clicked, do one of the following things. All right, so. Now we just have to tell it what to do. I'm going to go over here in my HTML down to where the JavaScript is. And this was the last function that we wrote where it says, um, you know, on click of the menu, and then you're going to deal with the whole toggle class, right? And then this is the end of that, that menu clicking function, right? But this is the end of the entire document ready function. So we want our function to be inside of document ready. So I'm going to come, but not inside of the menu clicking function. So I'm going to make a new function underneath menu click that 
is going to be subject to on document ready. Okay, and then I'm just going to paste right now so that it's uh, really straightforward. And this is our new function where basically it's saying, okay, also on document ready, when someone clicks on that nav link, do something right here on line 41. So what is it that we need to do? All right, so when we click on the nav link, we need to make the, the uh, menu close up. Well, how are we supposed to do that? Let's take a look at what's happening. Let's go ahead and let's inspect this menu button again and remind ourselves of what's going on. So what we're doing is we're looking here at where it says nav class equals nav closed. We click on that menu and the thing that's making it visible as a reminder is the fact that the nav open class is being added. Okay, well with the menu toggle button, toggle knows to either add it if it's not there or take it away if it is there, referring to the nav open class. All right, it knows to either remove it or uh, add it, depending on what the current state is. However, when we click on one of these things, one of these list items, it has no effect. So we need to be able to click on this list item and have this nav open class be removed. So as you could prob probably imagine, um, there is a, a function or there's a method in jQuery that's called remove class. And um, we're going to check that out really quickly. And by the way, if you ever are curious about this and you're like, well, how would I remove it or how would I do something like that? One of the things that you can do is just type in a Google search, remove class, and then look at all the stuff that comes up. Remove class jQuery. That's exactly what we need, right? And then first thing comes up is the remove class jQuery API documentation. And what's really nice is it gives you examples of how stuff can work and it shows you down at the bottom how you can uh, use it and it's really helpful okay but uh, anyway what we're going to do is come down here and inside of our function that says hey when you click on this anchor link inside of the the nav link we're going to do the following and what we want to do is target the nav open uh, element so the nav open class that's on nav and we're going to remove the class of nav open all right so anytime we click on this list item what's going to happen is it's going to remove the current nav open class and that there is an assumption that will it will definitely have a nav open class because in order for it to even be showing it has to be open that class had to have been added up here with this this menu uh, button function okay so let's go ahead and save this and i'm going to do a test see what happens and now if i click on one of these click it goes away and if you want to just double check you can inspect the element and we'll look at the nav closed here okay so click and nav open is added and if i click on let's say skills it's removed okay so all is right in the world of this menu now something that we also need to consider though even though you know we're basically done with the javascript part of this menu is we need to consider what happens when somebody doesn't have javascript enabled on their browser and you might think well who doesn't have javascript enabled on their browser you know, it depends on, uh, sometimes you don't have control over it. If you work for an agency where they think JavaScript is a security problem, maybe it's disabled on the computers and, you know, uh, in some kind of government agencies or in high security areas, whatever. Um, or maybe for whatever the reason, it could be disabled. And it's a very small percentage typically that has it disabled, but if they do have it disabled, then that means that this won't work. And the way that you can test and see if your JavaScript will break in Google Chrome is there, there's this little gear right here in the, um, in the uh, inspect element box that pops up. And if you hover it, it says settings. If I click on that, it'll pull up uh, something for the settings that's typically relevant to what you would want to test as a developer. And you can click on this button that says disable JavaScript. Right. And so now if I come up here while it's disabled and I refresh the page, all right, and I click on menu, 
Uh oh, I'm clicking, clicking, clicking. Nothing's happening. That means that I have absolutely no way to get my navigation. All right, so that's not good. Um, and then, of course, whenever I take that back off, refresh it again, you see it's working now. Okay, so we have to come up with a way of dealing with the um, possibility that JavaScript's disabled. And that's referred to as pr progressive enhancement so that you can make sure that everybody can still get the same content. So that brings us to fixing it progressively. And that is using uh, something called NoScript. There's some different ways that you could do it, but no matter what, you really are supposed to have a NoScript tag for any kind of JavaScript. And it's especially useful for people who are using screen readers. Um, they need some kind of alternative in, in the event that scripts are not a possibility. Let me just give you a little pointer on how to fix it. Um, if you were to add this immediately after the set of script tags, and by the way, that's where it's supposed to go. If you have script tags, you're supposed to have the corresponding no script tags right after it. So you would put something inside of these no script tags. And this is where that main nav comes in. Remember before uh, we were, uh, there's a, an href on the menu button that would take you to the ID of main nav and there was no main nav. Well, this is it. So if we put an unordered list inside of a no script tag, the bottom of the page that has the idea of ID of main nav, then we can jump down and still have access to our navigation um, even when JavaScript is disabled. Okay. And here's the reminder of where that was located. Okay, so this is up at the top of the page um, where it says nav closed. And we had that menu button that says href equals main nav. That's what I'm talking, talking about. So back in our HTML, this is where our script is. And we need something that corresponds right after it. And that's where I'm going to go ahead and paste, so you don't have to watch me type, uh, my no script that has the um, ID, the unordered list has the ID of main nav, so that whenever someone clicks on this up here and JavaScript's disabled, it will jump down the page and find our menu here. All right, so let's save this and let's test it. Let's go ahead and preview. And what we need to do is we need to inspect something on the page. It doesn't really matter what. And we need to turn JavaScript off. Let's disable JavaScript and let's refresh the page. And now if we click on menu, aha, see it jumps down to the bottom and we see that we have our menu available. Okay. Now let's refresh the page after dis turning the disable off, basically re-enabling JavaScript. Let's refresh. And now you see at the bottom there is nothing. I can't scroll any further. If I click, this comes up. You know, there's nothing else on the page. So we're all we're golden. Basically, let's if you want to just double check it one more time, disable, refresh, and then without me even clicking menu, let's scroll. And you can see that it's just there. All right. So we can click menu and it jumps to it. Now, one of the things that might be nice to do is go ahead and style this so that it really does look like an intentional menu. Let's go back over here and underneath our nav list, under the, the lowest one here, let's make a new section that's called no script styles. And I'm going to create a style for main nav li where the width is 100, height is 2.5m, line height, and so forth. I think this might look nice. Let's go ahead and hit save, and then let's do another quick test. And ah, let's actually go back here and refresh this page since we already have JavaScript disabled. And you see here that we've got these nice big links. OK, we need to get rid of the text decoration, though. And I'm realizing. I have all of these links showing up with text decoration. I realized that I never turned it off. So let's go up here and under our general text rules, instead of trying to do it each and every time, let's just make a couple of rules for A and A hover. Actually, refresh this page. And you see now we've got these nice colored links, no text decoration. All right. And see, it jumps down now. We're all good. If you want to see what it looks like without this, you can also look at it this way too. Just don't forget to go back and enable JavaScript. Otherwise, it won't be working when you need to go test it. So just take that back off.
and hit refresh.